a Q&A event. My name is Anna Mari Fanthorpe and I'll be your host today. Today I have Paul joining me here from Merge Communications. Paul Butterworth. What a great last name, by the way. It is Butterworth. It just sounds, you know. Thank you. <laughs> we're talking about video conferencing platforms and their key features. And we're actually going to be talking about a platform that you may or may not have heard about today, which I'm excited to get into. There's so many advancements in this area. And we do use video conferencing for pretty much all of business. Here we are on our webinar right now. So um, really looking forward to getting some insight so that we can make the right choice for our business. So thanks, Paul, for joining us here on Digital Boost. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Yeah, I have. Um, so I might let you kind of get started and let me open up the chats because the people will be tuning in on other platforms. Sure. Shall I screen share now? Ah, yeah, that'd be great. All right. Let me go and get my presentation. All right. Well, you tell me when we're good to go and, and I'll get underway. Yeah, it looks great. Thank you so much. So thank you, Anna-Marie. Um, so just to do a bit of introduction, um, my name is Paul Butterworth. I'm a shareholder and director and founder of Merge Communications. And amongst many other things we do, we are a distributor for a range of both video conference and media room technologies. So today, uh, we've been got an opportunity to talk about video conferencing and a little bit about our product, BlueJeans. Uh, what we hope to do today is not only tell a little bit about Blue Jeans, which is a uh, well-guarded secret, uh, one of the world's best video conference platforms around, but very little known, but also offer some observations we've made about general good practice etiquette and um, conduct of video conferencing. Hopefully, you can take some tips away today that might slightly improve the way that you plan for, uh, set up, and conduct your video conferences. Moving on to the next slide. So what we're going to do today is talk a little bit about uh, where video conferencing has come from uh, and how it's been impacted and changed by COVID. Uh, a little bit about uh, the things that are really good about video conferencing, uh, what's working for small businesses and what's not. Uh, we're going to uh, postulate on what we think video um, SMBs really want in the video conference products. We're going to tell you a bit about our Blue Jeans product and how that stacks up against what we believe the requirements are. And then we're going to impart a little bit about what we believe some good hints and tips on video conference are. So we're going to start by going all the way back to pre COVID. Um, and video conference actually goes back several decades. Uh, and it's had slow progress in terms of development of technology, improvement of product, and affordability. In 2019, we reached, a, I guess, a tipping point where I think the conferencing products were maturing and more usable and more affordable, and then COVID hit. And when COVID hit, things went absolutely crazy. We were all forced to work from home. Uh, to keep our businesses running, we had to find different ways of doing business. And we saw what I can only describe as an explosion of video conferencing. The only way we could effectively keep our businesses running was to rearrange ourselves around uh, video conference rather than face-to-face -face meetings. Um, and our days began to get filled with video conferences. Uh, so I'm going to run a little video clip uh, and I'll apologize in advance. Uh, it's supposed to be a slightly humorous clip um, and there's a bit of advertising on it because it's a YouTube clip. So I will, um, you'll see some ads pop up and I'll just close them down as soon as they turn up. Hey, Paul. Thanks for being here on time. Paul? Hey, Paul, can you hear me? I can't hear you. I can hear you. Can you hear me? Hey, guys. Hey, Tyler. Sorry, I'm late. I'm having a hard time connecting. One second. Paul's having a sound issue. I can't hear you. Try adjusting your output settings. Can you hear me? It's the gear yeah. icon. Tyler, are you on hotel Wi Fi? Yeah, a lot. Hilarious. <laughs> oh, never mind. I got it. I just had to change a few settings. Great, great. Uh, uh, get started. Get started then. Then. Oh, great. Oh, great. Uh, I think your mic is like is pushing up your seat. My mic? Do you have headphones? Do you have headphones? Oh, you put them on. No, what you just no, smell, smell them. 
No, I, no, I want you to put them on. Hey, Beth. Hey, everyone. Sorry I'm late. I had to download a new version of the platform. You should plan extra time for the updates. There's pretty much one every time. Sounds like someone just joined. Hey, guys, it's John. Um, I had to call in. I'm stuck in traffic. Have I missed anything yet? Uh, no. It would have been nice for you to join the rest of us, but uh, we'll just we'll see you when you get home. All right. While everyone is here, finally, uh, Tyler, do you have that financial report? Well, it's been the last few weeks updating our books, and i got some great news for you. Schedule from this point last year. We had a great Q1. We lost Tyler, I think. Am I frozen? I trip, I think we lost Tyler. Yeah, I know. I know we lost Tyler. Hey guys, it sounded like Tyler was cutting out. We know, John. All right. While we wait on Tyler, why don't we go over the file? Why don't we go over all of the reports on the file? Beth, are you with us? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay, everyone, I know some of you have to leave soon, but I just wanted to go over a couple of the areas before. Oh, okay. Okay, excuse me. Um, my wife's out of town this week. Daddy's so sorry. Okay, you just spilt grape juice on the carpet. Daddy is in a meeting. Tyler, can you go over the numbers one more time, please? Uh, I thought Beth had an adjustment. Hey, Beth. Yeah. Sorry, guys, that's my iTunes. Hey, guys, hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm going to go in. There. Hey, what platform are you guys on? Guys, FaceTime? It's in the invite. Oh, never mind. I see it. Right there in the invite. Okay. Now I can see everybody. Let's reschedule and let's just do a regular old conference call, okay? Paul, can you have David send out the nine digit passcode? I heard you. Yeah, he's been here the whole time. All right, everybody. I'll see you later. I'm just going to pause it there. There's quite a lot of uh, advertising and promotional stuff that occurs after that, and we'll just move forward to the next slide. So ho ho hopefully that um, <laughs> brought a bit of humour to um, to the exercise. Yeah, yeah, let absolutely. me just. We're in your Canva right now, just so you know. We are. And mm -hmm. I just need looking to get good. <laughs> out of there. Probably not what you where you wanted to be, but um. Oh yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. There we go. Back up to present mode. Yeah, I do like these Canva presentations. Uh, they're pretty easy to use. Cool. So hopefully there was a uh, somebody um, felt there was a bit of humor in there. That was just, I guess, there to prove the point and demonstrate the sort of things that can go wrong in video conferences. So let's reflect on um, COVID's hit. Uh, we've all had to adopt video conferencing um, and what's working for us. Well, the good news was that a lot of people were already using video conferencing. Uh, you can see a plethora of uh, icons here. So we've got Teams, Google Meet, uh, Cisco, WebEx, Zoom, and BlueJeans. So a lot of businesses who are already using it could simply continue using it and then uplift and use it more and probably land on, on plans and pricing that work for them. Um, most of the products work to a pretty good level. Uh, pretty much everybody's able to just lean into video conferences and start using their product. And, uh, and conduct their business. And the good news is that really without these products, we would have really struggled to get through COVID, work from home and lockdowns. And the other piece of good news is that we're all now, I'm hoping, we're expecting uh, much more practice at video conferencing than we used to be. But uh, what's not working? Uh, that humorous video uh, demonstrates a few other things. So uh, the most common phrase in the world at the moment, you're on mute. Um, probably wasting a good five or 10 minutes of every single video conference I've been on. Um, we still have a lot of people who struggle to um, arrive on time, and I've had many, many meetings start late. We've lost effective time in the meetings and not got through our agenda. I don't know about uh, everybody else, but um, I get a lot of video conferences where the quality is so poor uh, for some of the participants that they've had to turn the video off. In fact, I've been in some video conferences where everybody's turned off their video and we've basically reverted to an audio conference, which kind of defies the point of video conference. Um, there's still a lot of people who on various platforms struggle to work out how to share a document. Um, I wouldn't have thought it's that hard, but clearly some people are challenged by the technology. The other thing that we see from working from home is that not all of our environments are absolutely ideal. Uh, you get a lot of people will be in the front room or a bedroom or some other room where 
Um, the curtains are open, the sun coming in and striking them and you can't see their face, or they've had to retreat to the shadows for a variety of reasons in terms of placement of their laptop and uh, you can't even see their face properly, which does detract from the video conference experience. Um, as you saw from that video, a lot of people seem to struggle to get their headsets working. Um, pays to, to set up ahead of a video conference and make sure everything's working rather than land there, find it's not working, and then we waste five minutes at the start of the meeting getting everybody's headsets working. And, and I've experienced this myself, uh, being away from my PC, uh, walking through town, I'm five minutes away from video conference and I'm still 10 minutes walking distance. I can't get there on time. Some people will join from the road uh, and with all the background noise that can have a major impact on the video conference experience. And at the end of the day, um, just too many video conferences. Uh, I hear people complain to me a lot. They get through a day and they've been in seven, eight or nine video conferences. There's been so little time to do other things that absolutely worn out from the process of having the video conference. And people are turning what would have been five minute pod conversations into 20 or 30 minute video conferences. And so it's having a big impact on our available time. So these are the things that we're hearing from people we're observing as major impacts on the effectiveness of video conferencing and its impact on the way that we um, run our businesses. So what's the cumulative effect? Um, the cumulative effect I'm hearing for a lot of people is, is people are just really tired at the end of the day. Uh, if you're on six to seven to eight video conferences, <clears throat> you're probably not aware of it, but there are, there are micro events going on in those that create um, strain where you're struggling to hear, so you're um, more focused and attentive. Um, things don't go smoothly in a meeting, it doesn't start on time, people come late, there's interruptions, you can't get the agenda going. Um, you're 40 minutes into it and you know you're never going to make through the full agenda and so that creates lots of little micro strains. Um, people losing their video um, can interrupt the flow of a meeting and then sort of break up and disrupt that whole meeting experience. So at the end of the day, people are finding that they are just so weary and worn out the video conference that it's having an impact on their ability to get through their working day. So... Um, with that in mind, there are a number of things that you can do. We're, we're going to finish by looking at some best practices, some things that you might be able to do to improve your video conference experience and reduce that fatigue level. We'll start by looking at what we understand uh, SMBs will be looking for in a product, outside of the ability to influence lighting, network connectivity, and those sort of things. So comparing Teams and Zoom uh, and Google Meet and those other products. There is a product called Blue Jeans, uh, which we're uh, distributors for, uh, which has been around, I think, longer than Zoom, um, which globally outside of New Zealand uh, has a very high traction rate and is very well respected. Uh, what we're hearing from Blue Jeans is these are the key things we're hearing from not only SMBs, but other businesses they're looking for in their product. A quick startup. So from the time that you click go to the time you're on your conference and running, you want that to be as short as possible. You don't want to be spending time on the technology as you're starting up. You want to be in the room, people connected and experiencing the actual video. The next thing you want is uh, it's a video conference. So what you really want is for the video to not be disrupted with pixelation and video loss. Uh, you want reliable, high quality video. But even more important is audio is the key. And uh, if audio is breaking down, uh, then you've basically lost the meeting because people can't talk to their points. You lose continuity and flow in your meeting. Probably slightly less important, but uh, having an uncluttered user interface where you can navigate through the screen, find the features you want without having to jump through too many hoops and go through too many submenus, um, as it says, they're a simple and intuitive interface is really key. And if you're watching somebody in a video conference and they're trying to do something like uh, share a screen, sometimes you'll see their face and their eyes, they're moving around the screen, they're trying to find the right place. And it can be four to five minutes before they found the right place and can actually share their screen, which can slow down your meeting and reduce the effectiveness of it. Um, and lastly, uh, people have said that they want to use or join the video conference from any device, from a phone, 
from a tablet, from a, a laptop, from a meeting room system, uh, and have the same experience and the same features and be able to use it from anywhere. Um, so against those things, <clears throat> how does BlueJeans stack up? So <clears throat> based on um, market research done, uh, BlueJeans has been shown to have the best startup speed in the market. From clicking the icon to having the application live and working and people in the video conference are using it, it has been shown to have the best speed in the market. The second thing about BlueJeans is it's underpinned by Dolby Audio. Uh, and that does make a difference. Um, so the core platform is um, got uh, features and functions that provide um, absolute top end quality and a thing we call spatial audio. So in a meeting room, if you get up and walk around the room, then the people at the far end listening to that will be hearing the spatial difference in the audio. So the audio will move around the room. You'll hear right ear, left ear changes in position. If there's five people in the room and they're talking, you'll actually hear the sound of their voices coming from different places in your in your earsets or your headphones. Um, also, uh, Blue Jeans is known as one of the most secure video conference products in the marketplace. In the US and Europe, it's used in uh, core government and defense industries and is acknowledged as providing best security. User feedback is saying that Blue Jeans has a, um, the easiest and best to use interface in the industry. Um, you have to take our word for that or go and try it for yourself to uh, see whether you agree with that or not. They've also recently introduced a smart meetings overlay, which allows you to um, place smart key points in the video conference that are relevant and important to the conduct of that meeting that you may want to replay later. Uh, and to be able to uh, add notes to that, <coughs> condense all that in a highlights package and send that to people who either couldn't attend, uh, didn't attend, or need to catch up on it at a later point. Also, very recently, <clears throat> Blue Jeans slashed their pricing in half and are now as good as or better uh, than pretty much every other product in the marketplace for pricing, other than those that are given away free. And lastly, um, because I'm from Edge Communications, I can say that we have local New Zealand based and very responsive support in place. So if you buy from us, you can be absolutely sure that we will respond to your service calls very quickly and very accurately. So we're going to wrap up, and I might be slightly ahead of time, Anna-Marie, uh, with a few observations around what you might be able to do to get your video conference in the best place it can be to help video conference work for your business and to get the best out of your day and to get through the video conferences with effectiveness. So the first thing that we're going to say is there's a lot of people who have slightly dated uh, computer devices, be that laptop, PC, or tablet. And they are reporting that they are struggling with software compatibility in performance and throughput <clears throat> and are being impacted negatively by that device <clears throat> in terms of the video conference experience. So our advice would be if you've got a slightly dated device or a slightly under spec or underperforming device, it's worth going out and getting that updated. Uh, it'll pay you back in terms of video conference. Uh, secondly, and this is really important, is get the best network connectivity you can get. Uh, if you're in a location where you can get fiber and you haven't already got it, make sure you can get that. It's going to make a difference. If you can get your device at your video conference on hardwired rather than Wi-Fi, again, we'd recommend that. There's only a small difference between Wi-Fi and wired connectivity, but it is enough to make a difference in terms of the video conference experience. The Wi-Fi is also very uh, contested in terms of uh, the bandwidth it uses in the airwaves. Uh, so Wi-Fi isn't the absolute best for video conference if you can at all avoid it. The third piece of advice is don't go hands-free if you can avoid it. If you've got a headset, use it. If you don't have a headset, we recommend you go out and buy one. The difference between hands-free and the microphone in your device and the speakers in your device and using the headset is quite marked. Uh, you will notice a slight lack of synchronization between voice and your video experience if you're hands-free and you'll get some uh, sound interference around it. 
is one of the things you can do that's pretty low cost that will make a real difference to your video conference experience. Um, also, uh, the cameras and audio equipment you get in your laptop aren't necessarily the best in market. Um, the manufacturers like to pump these devices out at relatively effective cost and don't get the very best of devices embedded in their products. So if you are finding that your uh, video camera and your device isn't fantastic, uh, getting an external video camera is not too expensive. It will make a big difference to how you appear in your video image uh, to the people on the other end of the video conference. And if your audio isn't fantastic, again, I'd either go for a headset or look at getting an external device that will provide you with a much better hands-free experience if you still want to go down the hands-free path. There's lots of devices out there that will do that. Um, I'd look very carefully at where you locate yourself for your video conferences. And um, often we take part in a video conference and we don't really know how we appear to other people. But uh, if you get some feedback, you might find that people will tell you that you've been hard to see, um, that you're not fully visible, people can't pick up your body language and eye contact, and that there's light interference, either too much or too little, and that the background around you is very distracting and, and detracts from the video conference experience. So I would go and think very carefully about where you're joining video conferences from, and if you can at all relocate, if it's not ideal, um, I'd consider doing so. Um, last po second to last point, um, per the little humorous video we had earlier, uh, a lot of people really aren't fully conscious of good video conference etiquette, uh, arriving on time, um, getting their equipment sorted out, uh, when to join in, when not to join in, paying attention to the video conference, not trying to multitask and do other things while you're in the video conference, are all small things that will make your video conference go more effectively to start your meeting on time, to get through your agenda, um, to have better communication through a video conference. Very last point is if you're in an environment where you're sharing a combination of people working from home or off-site with people in a meeting room, meeting room technology is often uh, not really thought about. But if the meeting room isn't set up well, if the camera view in the meeting room doesn't include everybody, you can have people cut out of the picture. If the audio experience, the microphone pickup in the meeting room isn't great, then everybody else might be having a good video conference experience. People in the meeting room may not be um, joining in to the same degree. So if you have a meeting room in your business uh, and it's not fully equipped the latest uh, in meeting room technology, there's an opportunity to go and invest a little bit in updating that and making sure those people are taking part to the same degree as everybody else in the meeting. So those wraps up, hopefully you can take some of those points away. Uh, it might give you some clues as to how you can go away and slightly improve your video conference experience or what we believe is probably relatively low cost with a pretty good return on investment. I actually do have a, a couple of questions because, you know, we have spent so much time. Oh, do you want to, sorry, please tell us yeah, about yeah, your yeah. offer. My apologies, Paul. Go Not for a it. problem. So this is the last slide before Q&A. Um, as a special offer for the people attending this conference, we're going to offer you a free trial of video conference with Blue Jeans for two months. Um, uh, so we'll just sign you up. We'll give you a free account. You just sign and start consuming it. And then if you are using another product, you get to choose the two, compare the two, look at the video quality, look at the audio quality, look at the ease of use and interface, and decide for yourself whether Blue Jeans is a good product or not. Plus, we also have a product called Blue Jeans Events. Events is uh, like this event here is more of an online webinar than a two-way video conference that can host up to hundreds or thousands of endpoints if need be. Not that I necessarily expect anybody uh, attending this to have thousands of endpoints and wanting to join. But again, we'll offer you a free month of a Blue Jeans event if you're interested. Yeah. And that's the advertorial. I can hand over to you, Emery. Oh, thanks so much. Look, I did have a question, you know, around etiquette. I think it's really interesting um, when we talk about etiquette in the different generations and what they construe as um, good video conferencing et etiquette. Uh, there's been a bit of a debate over the past year on just young, you know, younger generations not turning on their camera, not wanting to turn on their camera, or folks in general just spending so many, so much time um, in video calls. Like, what is, you know, 
appropriate as far as having your camera turned off or on. Um, and it's a, it really seems to be some of the younger generations are quite comfortable to have their video off and don't really feel like that's, you know, a disconnect. Um, whereas I feel like I, some of, you know, more my generation or a little bit, we kind of feel like, you know, we like to see people's faces when we're talking to them. What would you, what's your perception on that? It's a very difficult topic and there's actually no one easy answer. But if you were to hold a face-to-face -face meeting and if somebody turned up to your face-to-face -face meeting and wasn't paying attention, right. wasn't focused on your meeting, wasn't engaging and participating, and if you had to call them out, if you had to reach over and say, hey, Steve, excuse me, can you join the meeting, please, in a real face-to-face -face live meeting, the same, I guess, courtesy applies in a digital meeting. Hmm. If you aren't, as a participant, actually engaged, then why are you at the meeting? Um, so sometimes I've been to meetings where people have said, actually, I'm, I'm going to stop inviting you to the meeting if yeah. you can't be engaged and participating in this dialogue because mm. you are a key part of it. Mm. Um, we've even had meetings that I've attended where the host, the chair, has said, excuse me, I need to stop this meeting. Well, we need to lay some ground rules around conduct here. Because we're not getting what we want out of this meeting. Now, it can be done in a nice way. You don't have to make it a, a rude thing or a, yeah. a confrontational thing. But if you set the rules of conduct uh, in a nice manner, then most people will respond and go, okay, I get it, um, mm. and, and respond in kind. And it looks like actually Sharon's made a really great point um, uh, about if you're in a rural area, like having the video on can often diminish your yes. uh, your connectivity. And so, I, I mean, that's obviously, you know, you want to have, be able to hear somebody's voice, you know, if, if you're dropping in and out because of the video. I know that I've got relatives that live in, one that lives in Antigua, and it's like the internet in Antigua is terrible, yeah. you know? So often we chat without video because it just drops in and out. So, yeah, of course, I would think those would be exceptions to to those rules you know making sure that you can still actually have the meeting if your connection is bad and i do know that that is a suit that's a big challenge with rural rural um Aotearoa is the fact that you know connectivity is is hard to come by sometimes i recently did a course and a lady to attend the um the the um, weekly lecture, she would have to sit, kind of stand on her picnic table um, because that was in the backyard because right. that was the only place her internet would was clear enough that she could actually watch the lecture. So I really feel for you, for you guys, if you're out there in rural and don't have connectivity, it does really create some challenges. Um, that, that's a really good point, Anna Marie. And I guess I'll point out a couple of things here. One is if you tell people at the start yeah. of a meeting uh, guys, I just want to say ahead of time, uh, I am network challenged out here. I may have to turn off my video uh, if the network performance is too poor. Everyone goes, great, fine, no problem. Yeah, 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 um, absolutely, yeah. The, the other point is, and I don't know about Zoom and Teams, but Blue Jeans has a dial-in option. Okay. So it, you, and you can have, it's in the meeting invite that you mm -hmm. just dial a PST number. So you can call from your mobile phone or your home phone. And when you join, you can say, I'm joining by a voice because I don't have enough network to give full video coverage. Yeah, that's great. And I know that Zoom and both teams have those options as well. I think most of the providers, probably Google Meet as well, also has that as a as an option to dial in. Not, not positive on that one, but I know Zoom does for sure. Um, and I find it really interesting to think about small businesses and businesses in general and the transition to online over the past year, um, past two years, sorry, um, and just how we can utilize online um, and video conferencing to connect with our clients. Um, because I know that a lot of teachers and in various different fields, whether it's, you know, um, I have a cousin that does speech pathology, but also yoga teachers and everybody's kind of moved to these online, you know, and having a quality conferencing um, system that allows you to work when we can't meet face to face can um, is is really important. And it also can add depth to your business, right? Um, it still allows us to get allows us to connect with people who are further away from us than maybe we used to work with, because we were doing everything face to face. So it's a nice option to kind of add a little bit of, of um, what width or 
birth to your to your business? Depth. You to... Should we call it depth? Depth. We'll call, we'll call it, it depth. depth. Yeah, I'm looking for it for it. I did it there. Um, and we've just got a comment from Dean. Dean saying Teams and Google Google also have dial-in options. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. great. Yeah. I think that most of them do because they do realize that some people aren't going to have the internet access. But you know, I guess we just all need to like hold on tight for this. Um, for this internet to get to all of us because really it is a disadvantage if we don't have access to it. And, and I would say on top of that, that if you know that you're in a place where you're going to struggle with network connectivity, and if you know you're likely to actually have video issues, you're potentially better off not even starting with video. Because mm-hmm. if you're partway through and the nice flow to the meeting, there's some good dialogue going on, you're getting through your agenda points, and then you get this disruption of somebody who is struggling to even join in video conference. Mm. It could just suddenly bring a halt to that nice flow. Yeah. So if I was in a, I guess, a marginal coverage area, I'd almost say, hey, guys, I'm not even going to attempt to join by video. Right. Because what right. you really, I mean, at the end of the day, it's about the meeting being effective. That's right. Yeah, or the session, whatever it is that you're doing, making sure that you've you've got that connection, you know, that ability to contribute is um, is really important. And I love the security settings that Blue Jeans has. It's actually, you know, being used by what large organizations like Facebook, well, Meta, and things like that are using Blue Jeans. Um, I believe is that correct? Am I saying that? absolutely? So yeah. not only is the individual connectivity secure, but you can uh, apply features like lockout. So when everybody's joined your session, you can go, I'm going to lock the meeting room now and nobody else can join. So you can be sure there's no eavesdroppers or people dropping into your meeting that you don't want. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I mean, we I, I think like oftentimes we don't think about that. Um, but if a link's being shared all about, say your business was, hey, I'm a teacher and I am I have this course and I've given out the link to all the people who've paid for the program. Um, and now they've actually shared that link with somebody else and they're, you've enabled the ability for somebody to log on with multiple devices because oftentimes, you know, we might want to be typing while we're watching on our phone or what have you. I, I enable that feature myself for the sessions that we do here. And, you know, it is a good thing to know, oh, okay, these people have all paid or, you know, these are the people who were supposed to be here. That's all I'm letting in. And then everyone else, you know, has to kind of wait for the next course in order to get in to that session or pay for it, I guess. It's something to think about if you yeah. are running online courses. Blue Jeans event supports that sort of course really well. It has a feature called admission control, which mm-hmm. means you create a list of people you're going to invite. They get the invite. They have to accept the invite and they're given a passcode to access. Mm-hmm. If you don't get that passcode, <clears throat> you'll be declined entry. It okay. makes sure that you know the people joining have actually got the right to be there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then later on, after events is finished, you get a attend and didn't attend report. So, you know, who actually turned up on the day. Yeah, fantastic. Well, this has been really interesting. You know, I always think that we we often know we use Zoom, like we're using Zoom here because that's what, you know, we were using two years ago. You know, that's what where we were. We use Restream um, that pushes out. So if you want to know how Digital Boost kind of runs, so I'm sure that there's capabilities like this on BlueJeans as well, Paul. Um, We use a system called Restream and that connects to our Zoom account and it pushes out onto other social media platforms. You could do a session straight from Restream um, if you wanted to, but we don't don't do it that way. And that's just because that's the way that our... um, our contract was set up with MB. And so this is why we are where we are here. Um, But there are lots of options like that. If you're going to do a live event and you want to be able to push out, you can start with something that's a bit more secure and then just share it out from there instead of having to be um, just on your social media or what have you. So um, it's great to have those analytics on the back end with platforms like Blue Jeans. So it's interesting to have a look at that. And um, I think it's a, we, even though we use lots of these platforms all the time, we often don't talk about it anymore. I think we kind of sit and forget and it's nice to have a little refresher on what's available. What do we need for as an SMB, um, you know, and, and have a look at some new tech and give something new a try. Perhaps it'll work better for you than what you're using right now. So a free two months is pretty cool. So I, I know that I'd like to give it a go in other things that I'm doing and see, see what it has to offer. Um, so I hope you guys take advantage but, of that offer. Do they just contact merge communications? How do they get it? 
Absolutely. So um, you feel free to send my contact details to everybody after this, and I'm happy to field any, any calls. We'll drop that in um, in the in yeah. Contact us if you need to. Let me just drop your website actually, if you don't mind, um, into the chat. I don't know how that. we're doing for time. We're doing all right, aren't we? Yeah, we're gonna go. Um, so one other comment <clears throat> um, is that people may not be aware of is that routers date fairly quickly. So if you bought a router four years ago um, mm -hmm. for your business or your home, then, and even if you've upgraded to UFB and have a very fast UFB connection, the router might be constraining your network performance. It mm -hmm. might also be constraining your Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi has improved significantly. Mm -hmm. Every six months or so, they improve the Wi-Fi standard and improve the Wi-Fi capability of routers. So if you have a four to five-year-old router, uh, it might be worth looking at whether you want to upgrade that to a newer, more capable router with better throughput, better ability to take advantage of full um, wi uh, UFB connectivity and better Wi-Fi performance. Yeah, excellent. And I actually, you know, for these sessions so that there's clarity, I use an Ether cord. Um, that's the correct terminology, isn't it? I actually plug right into my internet um, yes. and you can plug yes. from your router. If you're having connectivity issues, I'd highly recommend getting an ether cord and going straight to the source. It, it does make a huge difference. Um, my upload and download speed goes from somewhere around 150 all the way up to 400 when I'm plugged in. So it makes a huge difference in, in the clarity of the video if you um, do that. And you can check your internet speed if you are finding that you would like to know a little bit more about what's going on. If you just actually type in internet speed test, into Google and then run that little diagnostic. So just type this in. Uh, it'll it'll run a diagnostic on your internet speed. And if you're doing videos, I and you're streaming out at a minimum, a bare minimum, you need at least thirty what MPH is it? Is that right, the right acronym? Um, um, I would no, say that uh, you really kind of need more, but FPS. you know. <laughs> Oftentimes your, your download speed is really fast and that's stuff that you would use for like Netflix and all of that kind of stuff. But your upload speed is your video streaming. Yes. So, and that's often not included in your package. So run a little diagnostic, a little test on your internet speed and just have a look at your upload speed. What would you recommend? Would you recommend a hundred, 150, like 70? Cause I, you can get away with, I think you can kind of get away with like 30 to 40 um, 30 to 40 should be adequate. Um, there yeah. are some other attributes to network performance other than just pure speed. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes it can be patchy. If you're not on UFB, if you're on copper, then mm -hmm. what you might find is that you get a period where you're getting really good upload speed. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, out of the blue, your video picture kind of starts to spoil mm -hmm. because there's been a slowdown. And that might only last a few seconds or it might last minutes. And then all of a sudden it'll go back up again. Then it go down again. So it's not, it's not one set performance the whole time. Okay. Um, UFB is, is fiber tends to be more reliable in terms of if you've got good upload speed, it'll stay there, but it's not um, absolutely bulletproof. Yeah. There are still periods of the day, particularly if you're in a residential area in a suburb where if all, everybody's doing 4K streaming in your street, uh, even though you're on fiber, you might occasionally get a bit of a slowdown. Yeah. Okay. I mean, there's always going to be something, isn't there? There's always going to yeah. be this, like, you know, tech yeah. isn't perfect. We all know that. So, um, so, you know, do the best you can, but it is kind of nice to know what you've got going on. And so that way you can troubleshoot if you, if this is important to your business, uh, it is, it makes a huge difference in professionalism. If you can, you know, um, upgrade your camera or give yourself proper lighting, you know, just those key recommendations of putting yourself in front of a window so that your face is lit up. I think some of those things really help you to connect with people when you're uh, on a video call. And if that's a part of you do consultations online, it's really important for them to feel like they, they're actually talking to you in person as best that you can. Um, I know a lot of us don't have organizations with lots of players, so, you know, that might not be as relevant to you, but your customer experience is super important if you're going to be online. And so um, investing a little bit in that is, um, is a good idea. 
if that's for you. But thank you so much, Paul, for this. I, we haven't had any other questions come through. I'll just start over to the other platforms and make sure that I haven't missed anything. Um, and it looks like we're pretty good. So if you need to get a, a hold of Paul, you can just like go to that, that website, mergecom.co.nz, and, um, and then get in contact with them there to take advantage of that two-month free trial. Why not? give it a go. You know what I mean? I, I always love trying new tech. I, I think it was, it was actually Ryan Ashton was on here ages and ages ago. And he said, he said something, um, he's like, if you see a new button, push it, <laughs> you know, and like, because what we've learned and the guys at ACE training say this all the time when they come on AC, they, they say, oh, you know what? You get an app, you, you find out how to use it the way that you want for the action that you need. And then you kind of stop learning, you know, but these are those kind of things that tech changes so much. Don't stop learning. If you see a new feature, try out the new feature. Um, if you see a new app, it, it, like give it a go and see if it works for you. This is a, we should be doing these tech evaluations at least every six months to evaluate whether or not our tech stack, our, our um, tools, our digital tools that we use in our business are still working for us. And if they're not, finding something that works a little bit better so that your time can be used more wisely or, you know, you get some of that precious time back to use in other areas of your life. Hmm. And I'll just add, I guess, as a party note, that Merge offers, offers a, a customer uptake package. So if you buy the product from us, it's of no use to you or us if you don't use it properly. So mm. part of if you buy it is we'll commission a little handover package where once we've provisioned your license and you've onboarded and you actually know how to use it, is that we'll provide you a little informal training session. We'll jump on a leading session with you and we'll talk you through the key features and we'll take Q&A if there's elements of blue jeans you're not sure about or you haven't been able to work your way through all the features, we're happy to jump on a session and walk you through that. Awesome. Oh, thanks, Paul. Wonderful. I'm so glad you were able to take the time out of your day today to chat with us about this topic and um, wishing everyone a wonderful day. Hope to see you guys on Thursday in the workshop, which is a meeting. It's not actually put out onto our social media channels like this. And we're going to be putting the fun in finance <laughs> with Sam Harith <laughs> from SH Advisory and the Comic Accountant. And we're learning how to, um, you know, effectively and properly put our finances in order for our business. A very important thing, isn't it, Paul? <laughs> oh, yes. Cash, yeah. cash flow is king, apparently. That is true. So have a wonderful day, everyone. Kakite. Thank you, Paul, again, to you and your whole staff for putting this together. We really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for everybody's time. Really appreciate it.